Welcome to the Gibson Hardesty Terminal, which for over 60 years has been a key piece of energy infrastructure in Western Canada. Let's take a few minutes to explore the terminal and take a closer look at what goes into building and operating energy infrastructure of this scale. We are currently located above the top of the hill build-out, looking west. As we continue to rise, we can see the Gibson Hardesty East Terminal right in front and the Gibson Hardesty Terminal just behind that. Beyond, we can see tanks related to the largest egress pipeline out of Hardesty. Panning to the right to look north, we can see the origin of the second largest egress pipeline, with the third largest egress pipeline starting southwest of our current position. We are now looking at a bird's eye view of the Gibson Hardesty East Terminal. From a height of just over 100 meters, we can start to get an appreciation for the scale of these tanks. As we hover beside one of Gibson's 500,000 barrel tanks, what is really striking is the size of each one of these tanks and the overall size of the Hardesty facility. We can really get a sense of the scale of this infrastructure relative to one of Gibson's employees walking in the foreground. Another important factor to note is all the piping within the footprint, as that is the key to the level of service Gibson offers to customers at the terminal. With best-in-class connectivity to 11 inbound and 8 outbound pipelines, the Gibson Hardesty Terminal can access any crude grade in Western Canada and all major pipelines in Hardesty. As crude oil comes into Hardesty on one of the many inbound pipelines, it would then pass through the connection to that pipe and is routed through a series of valve matrices, such as this one, until it ultimately reaches the intended tank. When it's time for a batch of crude to head to market, it's this backbone that will deliver the crude into the right part of Hardesty. It's also the connectivity that allows Gibson to blend crude oil or NGLs on behalf of customers. Another distinguishing factor that sets Gibson apart from its competition is the company's technical and operational ability. While it might seem that anyone can build and operate a tank, when we see the size, scale and complexity involved in offering customers the flexibility to transport their product through a variety of methods and the planning and execution required to manage throughput of over 1 million barrels per day in a safe, efficient and environmentally responsible manner, the expertise required is clearly evident. So what does 10 million barrels of storage in Hardesty look like? Gibson has a total of 34 tanks at four separate terminals. Most of the tanks would be between 300,000 and 500,000 barrels, with this tank being at the large end of that scale. Each 500,000 barrel tank is approximately 75 meters in diameter and about 30 meters tall equivalent to a six-story building and covering the area of three professional hockey ice surfaces. We are now looking down at the Gibson Hardesty East Terminal, comprised of nine tanks with a total capacity of 3.7 million barrels of storage, as well as eight kilometers of piping. Going back to the storage analogy, that would contain a professional hockey arena about four times. Now, looking to the east, we can see the top of the hill. We're going to fly over it in a second, but what is important to notice is the change in elevation. It is hard to see from a map, but it really is at the top of a hill nine stories high, and it's something that Gibson needed to consider as it engineered the build-out. Given the large increase in elevation from the center of the Hardesty operations, the crude requires pumping in order to be delivered up the hill. We are now above the top of the hill, with a really good view of the various phases of tank construction. On the right, we can see phase one, which was placed into service earlier this year. Above and to the left of phase one, we can see the phase two tanks, where the walls are being built, and both a floating roof and fixed roof will be placed on top. Just left of those tanks are two phase three tanks, where civil earthwork has been completed, the foundation has been poured, and the construction of the tanks has begun. You might be wondering why it takes 15 to 18 months to build a tank. A large part of that is winter. When the ground is hard, civil work cannot be completed and it is challenging to pour foundations. To the right of the foundations for the Phase 3 tanks is where the Phase 4 tank will be built, with room available for two more tanks, which will fill out the top of the hill footprint. Once top of the hill is complete, it will be the largest area of development for Gibson to date at 4.6 million barrels and 10 tanks. 
With top of the hill nearly built out, where will future tanks be built? As we look south, we can see 80 acres of unused land just south of top of the hill, which connects to an additional 160 acres further south of that. To put it simply, Gibson could more than double its current tankage footprint. Looking to the east from the top of the hill, you can see the Herc Rail facility two miles in the distance. Through an exclusive partnership with USD Group, Gibson's terminal is the only one at Hardesty that offers customers the ability to move Western Canada crude out by unit train. The facility was recently expanded to accommodate an additional train per day, increasing capacity to three unit trains, or about 180,000 barrels a day. As we conclude our tour, we have one last look across the landscape at Hardesty, with Gibson right at the center of it. As we have seen, the scale of this infrastructure is very impressive and requires significant technical expertise and operational ability to operate safely and efficiently. Touching about one in four barrels exported from Western Canada, Gibson's Hardesty Terminal really is a key part of Canada's crude oil infrastructure.